Hi and welcome back to the Shumo Academy YouTube channel. My name is Jack, the co-founder of Shumo. I hope this finds you well and safe and healthy during this pandemic in your countries or cities respective to wherever you are in the world. Uh, it's really some really, really crazy times going on right now, you know, in the middle of this uh, coronavirus, you know, and it's, it's really blowing up again here in Asia. So wherever you are, please stay safe, stay healthy. Um, that's, that's the most important thing. Okay, so uh, in our third video today, previously we've spoken about why start a shoe laundry business and then followed by how to start a shoe laundry business. I think we still receive some questions uh, on what is actually a shoe laundry business and then how we can actually sort of like explain what it looks like, what it does, you know, how it runs, etc. So I think today's video, we're just gonna very briefly uh, answer some of the questions that I've received, okay? So, as I mentioned before, shoe cleaning business is basically a, a service that exists because there are some consumers who do not have the time and do not have the, the expertise to actually maintain and look after their, their limited editions or expensive uh, shoes and sneakers. So in their respective cities, they're actually looking for this specialist service provider, you know, to actually just pass their shoes on to them and then they know that it will be in good hands and taken care by all these uh, specialists who specializes in treating shoes and sneakers. So think of it, you know, you, we have laundry for clothes, for apparel. So this is actually a specialist uh, service where it's actually laundry service or, or services itself for shoes and sneakers. So that is basically what shoe laundry or shoe cleaning business is. How is the uh, shoes clean? You know, how do you actually service it? Do you actually use machines, etc.? So from our experience in operating Shumo and from all the other um, observations that we have done in the industry in the last three years to four years actually, uh, we dare say that the vast majority of the cleaning is actually done manually by hand. So the, the, about 90% of the actual processes of the cleaning is actually done by hand, manually, mechanically, you know, where we actually uh, clean the, the shoes and the footwear using uh, brushes and different, different kind of techniques and materials uh, using hand. Now we have seen some uh, other operators in the market or service providers as well. They have tried using uh, machines as well. There are some shoe cleaning machines in the market. Uh, there are different different kind of machines. However, I think they, we find that there is um, some pros and cons in terms of using uh, hand wash and machine wash. You know, so eventually I uh, will come into that in detail in a separate video. You know, in terms of the benefits and the the cons of using machines. You know, and the different kinds of machines they are in the market. But if you ask us from our experience in Shumo, we are actually doing everything almost hundred percent cleaning and servicing by hand. Okay, now. Third question that we always get, what does it look like? What does the shoe laundry uh, business look like? Can I operate it from a house? Do I need a shop? How big of a shop do I need? Do I need like a, you know, a separate place where people can drop the shoes off? Now to answer that question, there are, there are basically three types of uh, operating models. The first type obviously from where all of us started from is we started from home, you know, where we actually do it on a very small scale, you know, our friends and families would send us some shoes to clean and then we would then uh, just clean it at home and then deliver it back to our friends or family or customers. Now, that is okay if you're doing, um, you know, 30 pairs, 50 pairs per month, but as when the business or the volume grows, I think you will then need a more established and uh, place to actually do the services. So that's where you can actually also have a workshop, like a physical workshop. From our experience, a physical workshop, I think a good size workshop can be anything from like um, 300 square feet to about like 150 square feet, you know, from where we, we are, we use square feet in terms of the size of the, the outlets. So a physical workshop is where, you know, that space is dedicated for, uh, you know, just doing the services there, you know, the customers can come straight to our workshops, they can drop the shoes off to us, they can talk to us there, we can advise them, we can consult them on the conditions of their shoes. We do sell products as well. At the same time, you know, we do the cleaning and the servicing all within the workshop itself. Now, the, the pros of having the workshop, like in this case, is actually the security and the safety of the shoes. You know, if you if the customers drop the shoes off directly from at the workshop, number one, the benefit is there is no delivery costs, you know, to the customer or to you operationally as well, because these customers will come directly to your location. They drop the shoes off directly at, you know, your place. 
Now, the number two benefit is actually the security of the shoes. You know, if you have to move the shoes around, uh, and I'll go into details uh, later on that, you actually run the risk of misplacing and losing the shoes, damaging the shoes along the way when it's transiting, you know, from point A to point B. So th that is actually two of the benefits if you have your own uh, workshop and the customers come directly to your workshop. The third model that we have seen and we do sometimes try is actually like a, a drop-off point. You know, so you don't actually service your shoes there. You know, we don't actually do the cleaning at this drop-off point. You know, you partner up with some other businesses, for example, like a, a you know, a, another apparel, clothing, laundry business. You know, the customers can actually come off and drop the shoes there, and then. Um, the shoes get sent to your workshop separately. Now, pros and cons again, uh, the one of the biggest uh, deficits to that model is actually when they do that, uh, number one, you actually have to have a specialist there, you know, talking to the customers and actually sharing with the customers what is the problems with the shoe, uh, what is the condition, what is the services that's recommended, so on and so forth. You know. Number two is you obviously incur some other logistics costs where you actually have to move the shoes from that drop of point to your workshop and then from your workshop when the services are done you actually have to move it back to that drop of point again for the customers to collect. So that actually makes the turnaround time a little bit longer. For example, if it takes you about one day to clean the shoes, but then because of that, that, that you know, sending the shoes back and forth, you actually would take about you know, an extra two days to move the shoes back and forth. So that is normally uh, some of the models, the operating models, you know, in terms of having a workshop you know, at home, a uh, physical workshop where the customers come directly to you. And the third one is to actually work with some other businesses to have a drop off point. Now, next question, um, how, I think a very, very common problem for a lot of new businesses as well is how will your customers then find you? You know, you've actually set up your own brand. Uh, they actually, you know, they, they would actually like to seek out businesses like you. So how would they find you? How would they discover you? I would always say the best, uh, word, the best marketing is actually word of mouth. So, in especially if you're in the service line, you know, like this, this is the service line, you know, where we are servicing, you know, goods and we're servicing people. Now, if you did a good job, uh, and then they like your services, they like the, 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 the results that you've delivered, you know, naturally the customers will be very happy to actually go and tell a friend, tell a family, tell the, you know, their, their other, you know, contacts as well about your services. You know, so I think the number one rule when it comes to, you know, trying to, to, to market, you know, the brand, the golden rule, if you ask us in our opinion, is actually good service. You know, when you have good service, you have, you build your reputation. When you build your reputation, the word spreads, you know. Now, on top of that, uh, when you have already established that service level, the next thing you can actually do is then marketing. You know, again, as we mentioned in the previous episodes, marketing can be in the form of like digital marketing, social media marketing. You know, how does the customers actually look for your service? You know, in their particular cities. You know, for example, if I'm in the city, I need this service. How do I actually look for this specialist shoe and shoe cleaning business or laundry services in my city? You know, where would they look? Would they look on Google? Would they look on uh, YouTube? Would they look on Facebook or Instagram? You know, it varies country to country. So I, I, I dare say you should do a little bit of a homework as well, you know, in terms of how your customers uh, think and behave in your country. So that's a bit of homework there for you. Okay, so that's all for today uh, in terms of our sharing session. Uh, I hope it helps, you know, very sorry for the, the quality of the video because I'm actually shooting from my home at the minute. So just drop me a comment below, you know, if you'd like me to answer some other specific questions, you know, I'll be more than happy to, to spend this uh, lockdown period to actually answer some of the questions. Uh, if you find this channel useful, please uh, support us, you know, subscribe to the channel or if you think that uh, someone else might use the information of the channel, you know, feel free to share the channel across to them. So that's it for today. Uh, please stay safe and uh, stay healthy. And I will see you guys the next time around. Okay.